In this video, I'm going to explain how to get good at pickup even if you're extremely busy. Because let's be real, the idea of going out for multiple hours per week just to talk to girls, just to meet women, just to do pickup, is that's a tall order. I want to explain why it is possible to make this a part of your life even if you are exceptionally busy, even if you're someone like a doctor who has to work 80 to 100 hours a week, right? Let's go to the edge cases where you're just extremely busy. It can still be done and why it is actually worth doing even in those cases, why it is worth moving some things around to make room for this particular hobby. But I want to give some context. A few years ago, I was a full-time student, so I was taking 19 credits, which was the most you're allowed to take at my university, and I was getting straight A's, so I wasn't, you know, being a slacker. I was working full-time, I was going to the gym several times a week, I was actually in much better shape back then than I am now, but that's something I uh, gotta work on. And I was also going out four times a week, at least two hours each time. So I was going out four times a week and I managed to do all of that consistently for months on end. And I managed to thrive in all of those areas, to do very well in all of those areas, uh, despite the fact that you know it's 40 hours a week, at least a good 20, 30 hours towards school, and then another 10 or so hours towards pickup and another, what, four or five hours uh, per week that I was putting in to the gym. And I, I still managed to make that happen. So. The first thing you have to be aware of is no matter how busy you are, you're not as busy as you think you are. Even Elon Musk, one of the most busy people in the entire planet, uh, one of the most successful people in the entire planet, uh, in his biography, he mentions that although he was working over 100 hours per week, he was willing to dedicate 10 hours per week to his relationship with his wife. Obviously, that still wasn't enough, didn't work out, or <laughs> you know, maybe he has certain problems that make it hard for him to have a, uh, that kind of relationship because he's such an extreme personality. But that aside, put that aside, he was able to put that much time towards his relationship, even being far more busy than you are, no matter who you are. Like, I mean, maybe there's one out of a million people where they're like, no, I'm actually busier than that watching this. But everyone else, you have to admit, he was busier than you and he was able to put 10 hours into his relationship and that's one thing you want to keep in mind is like sexual relationships is always going to be one of the key areas of your life and once you get married once you get in a serious relationship you're going to be spending at least a good 10 20 hours a week with that person so at some point you are going to be dedicating a lot more time towards that area of your life it's, it's going to be a substantial uh, amount of the time you spend and think about how much of a difference it's going to make if you have a good relationship with someone that you chose out of many options, out of uh, an abundance of options, you chose the one girl that you just really fucking click with and that you have an amazing relationship with versus you, uh, you have no options, you choose that one girl at work or that one girl that in your social circle that is just like hitting on you super obviously. This was my first girlfriend was something like this and it was a horrible relationship because it was the only girl that liked me that was like, eh, she's kinda cute, but we did not have anything in common. We had no chemistry and this is what a lot of guys do. Once you do that, you're gonna be spending the rest of that relationship, which could be for years, it could be for your entire life if you're unlucky, you're gonna be spending 10, 20 or more hours per week with them anyway. So keep in mind that in the long term, this is gonna be something you're going to spend many hours per week of your life on anyway. Your relationships is going to be something you spend a lot of your time on. So it makes a lot of logical sense to spend the same amount of time per week on finding the right partner so that time that you're spending when you do get in a relationship is time well spent so that it's enjoyable so that you have a great connection with someone and you're not settling unless you decide you're going to cut women out of your life entirely at some point you're going to be spending much of if not most of your free time with a woman that you're in a relationship with so even in the before stages where you're looking where you're searching it makes sense to invest that time wisely now so that the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 
is doesn't turn into some terrible nightmare divorce story uh, where you hate your partner, you have a terrible relationship, you screw over your kids because you don't get along and you're not good parents together. You get what I'm saying? Like it makes sense to invest that time now because it's gonna happen eventually anyway and you wanna be proactive about it as opposed to just, oh, I'm gonna settle and then you're spending all your free time with a girl anyway. Instead of picking up women, you're spending it with one woman who you don't even like. So be aware of the consequences if you're not willing to put some time and effort into this. That is what is likely to happen. Look around you, look at your friends, look at, hopefully not, but maybe look at your parents, look at your family. Just look around and see how many men, how many people just settle for someone they don't even like and end up in a terrible relationship because of that. And they're spending most of their free time on that terrible relationship. How fucked is that? To be clear, I'm not saying this should be your number one priority, that this is more important than your passion, than spirituality, than your business, and no. But it is one of the most important areas of your life and it is always going to be one of the most important parts of your life. Dating, sex, love, always going to be. And it's just like your physical health, like your finances, like any of the other major areas, if you neglect it, it does not stay the same. It gets worse. If you neglect your health, you end up obese faster than you could even imagine. Just suddenly, how did I let this happen? You look in the mirror and you look fucked. <laughs> you just look horrible. This has happened to me in the past. Or you haven't been taking care of your finances, you're 50, you're still working at a grocery store. You get the idea? Same goes with your dating life. So it's always going to be one of the core areas, one of the top four or five areas of your life that is absolutely essential to living a good life. So putting all of your eggs into one basket, putting all your efforts into one or two of the major areas of your life, that's gonna backfire because then the other areas are not going to stay the same. They're not gonna stagnate and just be a flat line. They're going to go downhill and you need to be aware of that. So even if you're busy, you're successful, you're a type A, you're like someone who's really pushing yourself, keep in mind, that if you don't put some effort into the area of your life that is sexual relationships, it's going to get worse. You're gonna get deeper into scarcity. You're going to get more depressed about it. You're gonna feel more desperate, more frustrated, more confused. It's not just gonna stay the same. It's going to get worse, just like if you don't address your physical health, you're gonna get more overweight, more fatigued, weaker. It's going to go downhill over time. That's just a reality that you need to be aware of. With that said, you do not have to put 20 hours a week into this to get good. You just have to put at least a few hours per week, which is true for any hobby, anything that you want to get better at, to get decent results. So if you are extremely busy, don't just start, okay, I'm gonna go out four hours, three times a week. That's too much. Start realistically start with small goals start i'm gonna go out at least 30 minutes three times a week four times a week and then build on those realistic goals as you start to get momentum as you start to enjoy yourself the problem that you're probably running into is you think okay well i have to master this area of my life right away that would be great but if you don't have much free time it's probably not going to happen and you need to build into it. You need to develop this over time. So start with something realistic. Start with goals that are not overwhelming, that don't get you too far out of your comfort zone. Because if you don't set goals and you stay in your comfort zone, obviously you're not gonna make progress. But what is just as easy to do is to make extreme goals that you can never uh, actually keep up with that are not maintainable and then to burn out within a month or less. That is just as common as being completely apathetic and not trying in the first place. So I want you to be aware of that. And be specific, set a goal. I'm gonna go out at least 30 minutes, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week, for example. Set a specific goal that you can either succeed or fail, make it specific, because if you don't, you're most likely going to go with your emotions and your emotions are not on the side of your long-term goals. That is not how the human brain works. Over time, you can get your emotions on your side, but you have to take small but incremental steps in the direction of your goals and then as that becomes a habit, as that becomes normalized, as it becomes a part of your equilibrium, as it becomes something that becomes normal to you, then you can push yourself further and further. But if you try too far, it's like 
pulling a rubber band. It's like pulling a rubber band snaps, right? It snaps, it goes in the opposite direction. And that's what happens with a lot of people who try to learn pickup. Oh, I need to get it right away, push themselves too far, and then they don't succeed. That's why in my 30 day challenge, it's just 30 minutes a day. It's not 10 approaches, it's not 20 approaches a day. It's something that is sustainable. And if 30 minutes a day isn't possible for you, then maybe it's three days a week, maybe it's four days a week. But the key is, it's something that is difficult, but not overwhelming. With all that said, the last point I wanna make is to do an honest evaluation of what time you might be wasting. How much time are you spending watching Netflix, watching YouTube? Uh, are you sleeping 10 hours a day when you really only need eight hours? Are you spending time on social media that you could cut out? Are you spending time, like realistically, you probably are wasting a lot of time every day. The vast majority of people are. Statistics have shown that the average American spends over four hours watching TV per day. And they also spend over three hours looking at their smartphone every day. You could cut a lot of that out and make time for pickup and make time for going out and meeting women. The problem is it would be uncomfortable and it is more comfortable to keep doing the things you're doing and to rationalize why you need that to recover from a hard day of work. But in many cases, like if you're spending four hours watching TV, maybe 30 minutes or an hour is actually recharging. The rest of it is actually draining more energy than it's giving. It's making you go into this derp zombie state that is a horrible, horrible state to be in that is not actually necessary. So be willing to call yourself out and think, okay, is there anything that I'm doing that is actually wasteful that I could replace, that I could put towards this more productive activity of going out and meeting women? Ultimately, the question you have to ask yourself is, am I willing to give up some comfort, some temporary comfort, some creature comforts of watching TV and just vegging out of being a potato? into improving my life? Am I willing to face the fear of rejection in order to get amazing experiences with women? Is that something I'm willing to do? Or would I rather just accept my fate and keep going in the same direction I'm going? The fact that you're watching this video implies there's a part of you that's not satisfied with that. But look, if you are, okay, just admit it. I just wanna veg out, I just wanna be, you know, relaxed and comfortable and I don't want to challenge myself, if that's genuinely what you want, I think that's fine. But if it's not, you need to be ready to say, fuck that, maybe it feels good in the short term, but look what it's going to turn me into. Look how fucked up my dating life already is and how much worse it's going to get over the next several years. And look, if you're Elon Musk watching this, maybe you should just focus on your business. You know, maybe you are someone who doesn't have time to go picking up women. I understand that, but you probably aren't. You're probably overestimating how extremely hardworking you are and how much free time that you don't have because I've been someone who's worked 60, 70, 80 plus hours per week. I've done that. I know how stressful it is, but I've also managed to do that while also improving my dating life while also getting this area handled because I know that if I don't, nothing is guaranteed and the chances are I'm going to settle for mediocrity. Rationalize that it's a lot better than it is only to find out when I'm 50, 60 that I made the wrong decision just like many people I know have done.